Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss the events that occur in the second week of intrauterine life. In the previous video, we had discussed what happens in the first seven days of life where we entered with implantation of the blastocyst. Now let's see what happens in the second week of life. So mainly we'll be discussing the changes which occur at three levels. The first one is the changes occurring to the trophoblast. So the changes at the trophoblastic level. So what happens? So at the seventh day of life, this is how the trophoblast, this is how the blastocyst look like, right? So we had an outer trophoblast and an inner cell mass. This is our inner cell mass and this is the uterine epithelium or the endometrium. Now what happens is that the trophoblast after the zona pellucida is uh, the blastocyst after the zona pellucida has been lost will invade into the uterine endometrium and this process is what we call as implantation. Once implantation has occurred what happens is that we see the green color over here. This is actually the differentiation of trophoblast into two layers. So trophoblast will differentiate into two layers and the one which we have shown here in green is the syncytial trophoblast. So there is a syncytial trophoblastic layer. So this is how the embryo looks after implantation. So after implantation, what happens is that the trophoblast gets differentiated into an inner cytotrophoblast. So this is a cytotrophoblastic layer. And there is this outer syncytium layer, which is known as the outer syncytio trophoblast. Now what are the features of these two layers? The cytotrophoblast is contained of cells having a single nucleus and having well-defined plasma membranes and they are present inner near the embryoblast. Whereas the syncytio trophoblast on the other hand, the syncytio trophoblast, uh, a syncytium means a multi-nucleated cells having indistinct plasma membrane. So there are two features that differ cytotrophoblast and syncytio. One is the nucleus. Syncytio is multinucleated. Cytotrophoblast is uninucleated. Secondly, about their plasma membranes. Syncytio trophoblast do not have a distinct plasma membrane, whereas the cytotrophoblast does have a distinct plasma membrane. So this is uh, our uh, trophoblast. So the first event that we can write down is the formation or uh, differentiation into two layers which are a cytotro uh, inner cytotrophoblast outer syncytial trophoblast. Now what happens is that the cytotrophoblast they begin to invade into the syncytial trophoblast. That is the next event which occurs. There is the invasion of cytotrophoblast into the syncytial trophoblast. So we have this invasion. And then what happens is that within the, uh, within the syncytial trophoblast, there will occur spaces will be developed. So there will uh, occur spaces or what we call as lacunae within the syncytial trophoblast. Now why do we have this lacunae or why does the lacunae form? The lacuna is formed because of the invasion of spiral arteries. So the red one which we are drawing is are the spiral arteries. Now why is the spiral arteries required? Because we said that the blastocyst derives nutrition from the blastocyte. Now the embryo has grown larger. The nutrition for this uh, embryo will now be derived from the spiral arteries or the uterine arteries will provide the nutrition. We know that the placenta has not yet been developed. So which leads to our second step. There is invasion of spiral arteries into the syncytio trophoblast, which is a second event occurring in the second week of life. And after that, what happens is that, as we have said, there is the invasion of cytotrophoblast. into the syncytio trophoblast. This cross section over here, if we take a cross section over here, what do we see? If we take this cross section, 
this structure here, if we look at cross section, what will happen is that this will consist of a cytotrophoblast surround, surrounded by a layer of syncytium, right? Now, this structure is what is called as the primary villus. This is called as the primary villus. Now, the spaces that are present around these villus, these spaces which have been shown in red color, which contain the lacunae and filled with the spiral arteries, these spaces are called then the intervillous spaces. So these are our intervillous spaces. So the invasion of cytotrophoblast into the syncytial trophoblast will lead to the formation of primary villus. What happens next? What happens is that after the invasion, the cytotrophoblast will continue to grow into the syncytial trophoblast and it will actually form an entire covering or a shell uh, over the syncytial trophoblast. Now this shell that is being produced is called as the cytotrophoblastic cell. So once again, what happens is that the cytotrophoblast invades into the, the spiral arteries invade into the syncytial trophoblast via the lacunar spaces. Then the cytotrophoblast invades into syncytial trophoblast to form the primary villus. And then finally what happens is that the cytotrophoblast continues to invade and forms the cytotrophoblastic shell. So that is the last event which occurs with the cyto, uh, which occurs with the trophoblast. That is the formation of cytotrophoblastic shell. So with that, we end the event happening with the trophoblast. Now let's check what happens with the embryoblast. So to begin with, at the time of implantation, this is how it looked. That is at the seventh day of life. What happens is that we had an outer trophoblast and we had an inner cell mass, right? Now what happens is that this inner cell mass will differentiate into two layers. So now what happens is that the up, uh, the embryoblast differentiate, it starts to detach from the trophoblast and it differentiates into two layers. So there is an epiblastic layer from composed of cuboidal cells and then there is a hypoblastic layer. So these are the two events that happens. First one is the detachment from the trophoblast. And the next event is the differentiation of the embryoblast into hypoblast and epiblast. Blast and hypoblast. Now what happens is that the amnion is formed from the cytotrophoblastic cells, right? The cytotrophoblastic cells give rise to an amnion above the epiblast. And these amniogenic cells will uh, engulf a cavity between them. And this cavity is called as the amniotic cavity. So the next event which uh, occurs is the formation of amniotic cavity. Below what happens is that the cytotrophoblastic cells will give rise to yet another cavity which we'll discuss in the next figure so here our third event of importance is the formation of amniotic cavity after the formation of amniotic cavity above what happens is that these cytotrophoblastic cells will give rise to another set of cells that is present below the hypoblast and these cells will are called as the and these cells will enclose a cavity between them. And the cavity between them is what we call as the primary yolk sac. So this is the primary yolk sac. So this is our amniotic cavity. Whereas this is, whereas what is underneath below it becomes our yolk sac. Now the membrane or the cells that are derived from the cytotrophoblast, which surrounds the primary yolk sac is called as the useless membrane. So that's the useless membrane. It's the user's membrane actually. It's called as the user's membrane. Now what is the next step? So our fourth step is formation of primary yolk sac with user's membrane. Now what happens is that these layers, uh, we know that naturally the embryoblast and the cytotrophoblast, they start to enlarge. 
this one now what are the let's mark this uh, yeah, the figure let's completely label the figure this is our trophoblast and this is our amniotic cavity this is our amniotic cavity here we have the epiblast below that we have the hypoblast this is our primary yolk sac now what is the space that is present what is this space called what happens is that as the embryo expands there occurs a space between the trophoblast and the embryoblast so if we can write that down there occurs a space between the trophoblast and the embryoblast and this space is called as the extra embryonic so it is present before or uh, it is present beyond the embryo so this is called as the extra embryonic mesoderm this is there is the development of extra embryonic mesoderm which is our fifth event that is the formation of extra embryonic mesoderm which we will uh, refer to as eem now what happens to this extra embryonic mesoderm in the region of extra embryonic mesoderm there will be development of cavities so cavities are formed in the extra embryonic mesoderm and these cavities will actually differentiate the extra embryonic mesoderm into two layers into two parts which are the two parts we have an inner part that is near the embryo which is known as the splanchnopleuric mesoderm and then we have an outer part which covers the entire you know embryo and that is called as the somatopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm so to write that down what is the event which is occurring the sixth step is the uh, differentiation of the extra embryonic mesoderm into two layers which are they they are the inner site inner splanchnopleuric layer which surrounds the embryo at the yolk sac layer and the outer somatopleuric mesoderm so these are the two layers and this is what happens next now after the differentiation what happens is that there is further development of the embryo and the cavities which we see we find here the cavities have reached here right now these cavities will start to expand and the cavity formation will expand even further and finally by the end of second week so now we can say that by the end of second week this is how the entire embryo looks like so let's mark some structures over here so what is this layer this is our somatopleuric mesoderm somatopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm right what about this layer the inner part the inner part is our splanchnopleuric mesoderm uh, extra embryonic mesoderm what do we have here inside the embryo we have an amniotic cavity right here we have the epiblastic cells now here we have the hypoblastic cells this is what we know so far and this is the now the cavity gets a name this cavity which is developed in the extra embryonic mesoderm it is called the extra embryonic coelom it is referred to as the extra embryonic coelom now the if we notice what we will find is that at this region marked here we will find that the there is no formation of extra embryonic coelom right why is it so this is actually a connection between the embryoblast and the cytotrophoblast so the, this is that this is our trophoblast and this trophoblast we know that by now it would have differentiated into our inner cytotrophoblast and outer syncytial trophoblast and it is at the syncytial trophoblast where the maternal spiral arteries are present right so the nutrition from the trophoblast must enter into the embryoblast and that entry is through this connection present over here and this is called as the connecting stalk now the importance of the connecting stalk is twofold firstly it later develops into the umbilical cord so the connecting stalk develops into the umbilical cord next what happens is that by this there is an axis cephalocaudal axis which will develop into the embryo so the connecting stalk is actually the tail end it represents the tail end now opposite to the connecting stalk what happens is that the hypoblastic cell if if we analyze they start to get uh, cuboidal and these cells are 
form the head end and this head end of the embryo the structure that is formed by the hypoblast is called as the precordial plate so precordial plate formation occurs by the end of second week now what happens to the yolk sac so this is our yolk sac now the yolk sac actually uh, gets pulled by the mesoderm so our primary yolk sac gets pulled by the mesoderm and because of the pull what happens is that a secondary yolk sac is formed so our primary yolk sac gets pulled by the mesoderm leading to the formation of a secondary yolk sac so which is our secondary yolk sac so with that we complete the events which are occurring in the uh, which occur at the end of second week now there is an important term to define right when we spoke about trophoblast we had defined a villus a villus is the structure formed by the invasion of cytotrophoblast into the syncytial trophoblast similarly we have a structure over here and that is the chorion so this structure is what we call as a chorion now what does a chorion contain so if we analyze here the chorion contains the somatopleuric so we, it has the somatopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm plus it has the trophoblast so the trophoblast is differentiated into a cytotrophoblast represented by ctb and it has a syncytio trophoblast this whole structure is called as a chorion so that is what happens by the end of second week we have discussed the changes occurring at the level of cytotrophoblast and we have discussed the changes occurring at the level of syncytio trophoblast now coming finally to a very short topic what happens to the endometrium so the endometrium actually undergoes a name change so the endometrium is called as the once the uh, implantation occurs the endometrium will be called as the decidua and this decidua will be differentiated into three parts depending upon the uh, relationship with the endometrium the first part is the decidua basalis the second part is the decidua capsularis and finally what we have is the decidua parietalis now what uh, what uh, basis is the differentiation of the decidua the decidua basalis is where the embryo invades right so the part of uterus where the embryo invasion occurs during the implantation is called as the decidua basalis what is decidua capsularis decidua capsularis is the endometrium that covers or surrounds the embryo after implantation so the immediate part of endometrium which surrounds the embryo is called as the decidua capsularis and decidua parietalis is the rest of uterine wall so to understand that if we go to our previous figure in this figure in this figure this is our decidua basalis and after invasion the entire uterus that is present over this area which is represented by the black dots this will be our decidua capsularis and the remaining part of uterine wall will become our decidua parietalis so those are the events which occur at the end of second week to summarize the changes occurring at the level of trophoblastic layer it differentiates into a cytotrophoblast and an inner inner cytotrophoblast outer syncytio trophoblast where the invasion of spiral arteries followed by the cytotrophoblast into syncytio trophoblast to form the primary villus occurs and with that there will also be formation of intervillous spaces the next is the embryoblastic changes the embryoblast uh, will differentiate into an uh, epiblast and a hypoblast and there will be formation of an amniotic cavity and a yolk sac the yolk sac will again differentiate into a primary yolk sac and a secondary yolk sac and between this trophoblast and the embryoblast there will develop a layer of extra embryo outside the embryo so extra embryonic mesoderm then in these extra embryonic mesoderm will have cavities which will enlarge and coalesce and they are called the extra embryonic coelom the extra embryonic mesoderm will develop into uh, a somatopleuric outer somatopleuric and an inner splanchnopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm and the structure chorion consists of the somatopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm along with the cytotrophoblast and the syncytio trophoblast uh, those are the changes ha happening at, to the embryo and by the end of second week connecting stroke will be formed which will later develop into the umbilical cord and there will opposite the connecting stroke there will be the head end that is the cephalocaudal axis will be established and that will be uh, there will be changes to the hypoblastic cells and that group of cells is called as the precordial plate now and finally the third one is the endometrial changes the endometrium will be called as the decidua which will be differentiated into decidua basalis where the implantation or the invasion of embryo occurs then the decidua capsularis the part of uterine wall which surrounds the embryo 
and the remaining part of uterus is called as the decidua parietalis. So with that, we end our session on sex.